Hello, dear ones, and welcome to Subtle Medicine Radio, brought to you by Inner Spark. This is the resource for all things holistic healing, natural living, conscious relating, epic life changing, and spirituality, all steeped in earth based wisdom. We're your hosts, Devin. And I'm Mike. On today's show, episode 10, we're discussing the notion of letting go as it pertains to past traumas, grief, and pain, and why that endeavor is a fool's game and is utter and complete bullshit. Let's dive in. All right. Okay, so we've all heard it, right? Like, just let go. Let it go. Why can't you just let it go? I think you should just let it go. And how does it make you feel when you hear this? Oh, it's, uh, it's frustrating to say the least. I think sometimes it would be nice to just imagine that whatever traumatic event just never happened. But the truth is it did. So now what do you do with that? Yeah. And let it go isn't helpful. I know when I heard that, it makes me feel angry, frustrated, and even ashamed. Angry because it feels impossible. And it is. And I'll get to that in a second. Makes me feel frustrated because I don't like not being able to do something and ashamed because clearly my display of emotion or displeasure has had me commit a social faux pas and made somebody else uncomfortable. And to me, let go as it pertains to trauma, grief, challenges, and pain sounds like a plea to simply disengage this wounded part and to separate from it, to release it and throw it away. And anyone who has ever experienced pain, which newsflash is every single human ever, knows that to simply let it go or release it just isn't possible. There is only one one thing to do. Are you ready for it? All right. Am I? You tell are, me. are you ready? So there's only one thing to actually do. It's not let go, like release it, shoot away. It is to transmute it. And the definition of transmute, which has unfortunately received a lot of attention and popularity in the current new agey atmosphere. The true definition is this. And I actually got this from the dictionary for those of you wondering, like, is this the definition she's pulling out of her ass? No, I went and sought the help of uh, Ms. Webster. We always call him Mr. Webster. It's Ms. Web- Webster now. So anyway, it's to change in form, nature, or substance. Transmute is to change in form, nature, or substance. Transform is a synonym. However, I dislike it and don't think it captures the true essence of what I'm trying to get at here. The difference between transform and transmute is that transform has shifted the way something is done, thereby influencing it to still maintain the same end goal or same method, but without actually transmuting the core issue itself. It's creating a newer, more hospitable environment or method for the exact same thing to continue either more efficiently or something like this. Transmute recreates, rebirths, metamorphosizes. It's an entirely different thing now. You have entirely rearranged the subtle pieces to create a new gross outcome. Transform seems very gross surface level to me. It has simply created a new environment so that this thing can still live and maybe we're still engaging with it in the same way, whereas transmute is like everything is different. The relationship to it, the form, nature, or substance has entirely changed. So I think transmutation probably has the same root, and I'm no etymologist, I haven't looked this up, as mutation. So when something mutates, it's changing from the inside, some cellular change is causing something visible to happen and transformation is like from the outside in like I can undergo a cosmetic surgery to transform my face that doesn't mean my face mutated so that's how I think of transmutation is a subtle change from the inside out that's perfect and once again I always joke that he's my like digestive system because he will take these big elaborate things that I have thought of and kind of like succinctly give a little nugget. So I love that. Transformation is kind of outside in. Transmutation is inside out. Is that what I'm understanding you're saying? Yeah, that's that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. All right. Well, there you go. That's why you have me here. (laughs) Okay. So I could go on like this forever. I love words very much. Actually, one of my favorite classes in undergrad, I took this anthropology class in linguistics and we did so much etymology and I just I could just go on this tangent forever so this is getting super semantical now transformation transmutation I invite you to start thinking in a transmutation fashion so we are transmuting the challenge and the pain and the trauma shifting our relationship to it allowing it to become something 
completely different. And I love when you said, so if we're transforming our face, right, through um, cosmetic surgery, it's still a face. So it's still serving the same purpose. It's the exact same thing. It's kind of like what I was saying. We have created a new environment for this thing to still exist as it is. So it's still a face. So when it comes to challenges and traumas, I'm inviting us to radically step into our sovereign creatorship and transmute it into something entirely. And you will find that when you undergo this process, your challenges become your sacred purpose and your gift. So what do we do? <clears throat> we can't let it go. We have to transmute it. And what does that look like? And how do we get there? And why would we want that? Well, I'm so glad you asked because that's where we're going next. Trauma changes you on all levels. All levels. Nothing is left unscathed. Physiologically, emotionally, physically, mentally, energetically, spiritually, you are not the same person and nor will you ever be again. Your DNA changes in response to the shock and stress. Your identity shifts. You now wear different masks or armors out of protection. You view the world differently. You have a new definition of self. You have a bunch of feelings and emotions that are new and different and uncomfortable and that you may feel ill-equipped to handle. Shit's real. <laughs> And many of us bypass this because it's uncomfortable and because we aren't shown how to be with ourselves in this capacity. And it's also societally unacceptable to be in a state of grief. So the things that have happened to you are yours now. They're forever part of you and you're never going to be the same again. So why would you just let it go? You can no more easily let go of that than you can your pinky or your right ear. What we can do is change our relationship to it, like I said. There's nothing wrong with you first and foremost. So let's just just like, let's get that very clear. There's nothing wrong with you. Every single one of us is walking around with something. And I've had so many clients plead to me, why can't I just let this go? My life would be so much easier if I could just let this go. So this internal struggle with trying to do something that is impossible, let go of this piece that's, that is a part of you, creates even more dis-ease and is actually the dis-ease in the first place. It is not so much having experienced this traumatic experience or this shock or this grief or this pain or this challenge so much as our orientation to it. So the resistance to this new piece of us is what truly causes the dis-ease on all levels. Anything that we resist amplifies and takes on a whole life of its own. Wow. Okay, so if I can just jump in here because what you just said, can you like repeat that last little bit? Which little bit? <laughs> <laughs> The resistance to yeah. this new piece of us yeah. is what actually causes the dis-ease. So the resistance causes the dis-ease okay. and anything that we resist amplifies. So that is like hitting me like a lightning bolt right now because I have, we all have, you know, traumatic things in our, our past that we think are causing our problems right now. But you're shifting the focus onto our resistance to that change. So our inability to integrate this new information into our lives is what's causing our present suffering. Like, if I'm understanding it correctly, like the traumatic event happened and it sucked, but the thing that's affecting us now, maybe years later, is not the traumatic thing anymore, but our inability to integrate that, like to just the resistance is the problem now, is the current present problem. Right? I think I think it's the problem once anything you experience happens. I don't know if it would be now or, or then. It, it's the resistance resistance to the change, resistance to needing to maybe show up for ourselves differently or to accept that we are now different or to um, be with these feelings that the situation evoked because they're new and different and uncomfortable. Each new situation in our lives, whatever it is, you know, and I, I dislike labeling things, but whether it's good, bad, neutral, and different, each new situation brings new experiences and new emotions and new feelings. And so typically the more challenging events bring about ones that feel challenging and are uncomfortable. So it's our resistance to that. And those things are there. They live in us. And that's when we'll start to bypass and turn to things like booze and food and sex and porn and drugs and all these other things to just numb out. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight what you had just said about the resistance being the thing to look at. That's That definitely shifts my perspective a lot. Thank you. Yeah, it's our inability to truly flow with the currents of life and with the the changes and we talked about this on our seasonal episode as well it's 
kind of the same exact thing metaphorically when there is a resistance to life and all of her offerings and invitations and events and trials and tribulations when there's a resistance to flowing with that that's what causes problems whether it's you know I'm not changing my lifestyle to um, best support my needs in summertime that's a resistance to the natural flow of life or it's I'm resisting my emotional body wisdom and my emotional body intelligence to get me through understanding this this trauma that now lives in my body. It's now part of my body. And because it's uncomfortable or I don't like it or I don't know, da -da, the, that resistance is what stifles that, that life flow from flowing. And so, like I said, the, the body carries everything. And all of the things that happen to us and that we experience in our lives are simply energy. And when we don't allow them to flow it stagnates and we fight with ourselves and that is just creates more dysfunction and it's it's kind of an ongoing cycle until we can get to a point where I mean our bodies literally force us to wake up because there is some serious issue taking place physically or we've just kind of had enough and something knocks us to our knees and we realize that you know my way ain't working and I'm ready to engage with myself in a new way because I, I know what's possible for myself I see where I am right now and I'm the only person in my way because at the end of the day we are you know we might succumb to the victim role where it's like oh but someone else is holding me down or all these things I've been through well I I honor that I honor all of our paths and all of our journeys and all of the shit we've been through because we've all had our fair share and we're not victims and the longer that we wallow in that victim mode the more time passes the more resistant we are the more dis-ease sets in the more that we are even more stagnant and the more challenging it's going to be to <laughs> unstagnate ourselves when we are ready to move forward and the heartbreaking thing is that so many of us go our whole lives without ever fully moving forward and so my big mission and calling is to wake us all the fuck up and have us reclaim our creatorship and our sovereign power and understand how to really be with ourselves and how to fully work with and engage with all levels and all pieces of ourselves. Because all of it's welcome, all of it's needed, all of it's here. You know, you heard me say earlier, you can no more easily release or just let go of your pinky or your ear then you can't wait what the, you can no more easily let go of what am i trying to say this is what happens when no, i get too you're passionate good. you're on yeah no you more can easily. no more easily let go of your ear or your pinky than you can this this challenge or this trauma that's that's living in you period and you don't want to let go of these things even if you could like wave some magic wand or get the men in black flashy thingy and just like erase your memory and start fresh because your path is your sacred path. My path is my sacred path. Mike's is his sacred path. We're all walking together and we're all on completely separate journeys and we all have our own purpose and our own gift. And those sacred purposes and ease and nourishment and all of these things that we all just want, right? And they feel sometimes like they're so out of reach or that's not for me in this lifetime. Bullshit. All of those things are yours and they're already here. And guess where they live? At the bottom of the proverbial pile of shit that you're not looking in. At the bottom of that and through all of your your trials and challenges is this beautiful pearl or diamond or whatever really tickles your fancy. That's where it is. So your purpose and your gifts and the way you are meant to be of service in the world. And I don't care if you're a carpenter or a lawyer or an accountant or a shaman or an intuitive coach. Your gifts, the way to true ease and true nourishment and a life that feels fun and not just something to get through is through your challenges. The answers are revealed to you through the transmutation process and the rearrangement of your subtle pieces. There is no other way. So leaning into the subtle pieces of you, the emotional, mental, and spiritual facets of your being and really understanding what's there. What What is so scary? What feels so scary that you don't want to look at or that you're bypassing or that Maybe you have fallen into complacency or it feels taboo. Whatever it is, what are you, what are the pain points? What are you ashamed of? What, what is there? It's like shining a flashlight under the bed looking for the monster. You know, we realized this whole time it was just a pile of old socks <laughs> that are actually your favorite socks and you've missed them forever and ever because they're just the best socks in the whole wide world. See where I'm going with this? All right. So some tactics to use as you begin this process of inner alchemy, as I love to call it, this process of transmuting challenges challenges into purpose is to employ all seven pieces of true healing and we discussed this concept a few episodes back and if you're not in my Facebook group you must get in there. I have about an hour's worth 
of material for each piece. So there is a phenomenal video lesson for each piece and I highly recommend getting in there if you're not in there. Typically things that cause a lot of pain later in life are because of unprocessed childhood events. So doing some inner child reconnecting, thinking back to a time in your life when you felt this same way that you're feeling right now. So the challenges that you're experiencing today, thinking back just on the feeling level because this, the circumstances are always going to be different, but tuning into the feeling level and tracking back to a previous time in your life when these same feelings were present. That's a beautiful tool to begin this process as well because you can kind of go back and pinpoint, okay, this is when I first remember this feeling and ooh, it's actually kind of a theme throughout my life and what is the true need here? And, and becoming your own sexy investigator, your own sexy scientist and just really getting in there and backpacking through your internal wilderness. Another tactic is to source from the body. So using expressive arts and embodiment practices to stay connected to the body and learn from its wisdom during times of big emotions and creating images of your feelings, tuning into where this feeling, this challenge lives in your body and, and harvesting wisdom from this body part. And I shared a practice with that also in one of the seven pieces of true healing videos in my Facebook group. I think it was the embodiment piece one. Um, there's a, a practice in there for communicating with the body. The body holds all of our stories and every single thing that has ever happened to us in our lives. And aside from that is just an ancient wise vessel that has always been here and is our translator and understands life on earth a lot better than we do. So harvesting and sourcing from it and getting into things like body part metaphors, I, I work with these a lot. So if you feel your grief or your challenge living in your hands today, thinking into all of the purposes of hands and the different metaphors of hands and the way that hands work and what your hands are used for. They're energetic extensions of our heart, for example. We touch, we hold, we release, we grab, we all, all these, these different things. And so feeling into that on a metaphorical level to harvest more wisdom, creating images of your hands, um, engaging in movement and embodiment practices that really focus on hands and staying with the feeling level. So anytime we, we go into this, our mental body, the mind and the ego are going to want to come in and do their, their thing and the inner critic might turn on and might be all kinds of stories about how this is stupid or you're not doing it right and you know whatever the case may be and this is not a time for your mind. Our mind is beautiful. I'm not knocking the ego. We need our ego. Our mind is incredibly beautiful and for most of us we live in a hyper intellectual mental body focused mode most of the time and when we're beginning these these practices of transmutation and internal alchemy it's a time to reconnect with the emotional body and the physical body because that's where our answers are that's the missing link the catalyst for these transmutations if you will and we must strengthen our ability to tune into those pieces of ourselves because we got the the mental body thing unlock, right? We've all got that. So allowing it to rest and harvesting and sourcing from these other amazing pieces of ourselves that we have. It's really time to stay open and curious and quit trying to let go and instead reframe, rework, rebirth, rearrange. You are rearranging the subtle pieces into a new gross experience where all of you is welcome and needed. So transmute the present challenges and resistance into ease, purpose, and allowance. And I think I have like totally cut Mike off as he has wanted to I've had some <laughs> interject and here. ask questions. Yeah. So there's been a couple. I'm passing it over to you. But babe. no, that was awesome. Thank you. And one thing that I wanted to mention goes back to when you were talking about resistance, and especially when you mentioned living with the seasons. That really gave me a little, you know, spark there. If you are resisting the natural flow of life, how can you possibly expect to be living fully? That's some powerful shit right there. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously. And. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's true, because once you realize it, it just seems so obvious. Like, I never would have phrased it in the terms that you have, but now that you put it like that, it just seems like common sense. Like, why are we not living more in tune with ourselves and with the seasons and with the flow of life? And how can you possibly expect to be living fully when you're resisting that same flow? So I just wanted to point that out, and thank you for that. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out was, 
notice that the seven pieces of true healing is not like some tip of the week kind of thing. Like, it's not some, oh, here's three ideas for your backyard barbecue or, you know, anything <laughs> like that. It's not some trendy kind of catchy sort of uh, just thing that we're putting out there one time and we'll be on to something else the next week. And I did not necessarily appreciate the scope and the scale of what you were putting together as you were doing it. But now that you have like, my God, seven hours of video and I mean, these podcasts, that's a lot of content and it's something that we can really go deeply into. You know, it's not like you have to research these things on your own and pull because that, that's one of the big things about this is that you're drawing from a wide variety of resources. Like the number seven isn't just a coincidence that corresponds with the chakras, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have all these different systems and this vast study that you've done in different fields and you're bringing it all together into this one source that people can go to. And if signing up for a Facebook group is too much for somebody to do to tap in to that kind of a resource, uh, then I don't, I don't know what they could possibly hope to get. It doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> So I just really wanted to, you know, put a red flag on that one that this is, I don't use the word often, but epic. Oh, you really don't use that word. That's like my word. And yeah. I, I overuse it. So if Mike says it's epic, it's super epic. <laughs> if I say it's epic, I mean, it probably is. And Or it might just be mildly interesting. I'm just like <laughs> so excited to be here. So yeah. everything is epic. <laughs> okay. I had something else I wanted to add, and it's escaping me. Okay, so basically, in conclusion, and this is such a, a topic that I am passionate about, because especially as sensitive, empathic souls who feel deeply, I mean, we, we feel deeply, and so we're constantly being told, like, oh, you're so sensitive, or, ah, oh, just let it go. And these things that have kind of entered into our collective lexicon of things to say, let's start to change that. Like, let's start it with us. The next time you feel the call to tell someone to let it go, or they're so sensitive, or any of these other things, change the words. Let's create a culture and an environment where we welcome emotional displays, we welcome the grief process, we welcome challenges, and we are in this together and aren't walking around like, I'm not a human, I don't, I don't feel things. You're weird, you're, you're, you feel things, you're a human. It's like, no, we all are. So let's all be in this together and think differently and let it start with us. So we're not letting go to, you know, just let go and bypass. We are in the process of harvesting the wisdom and the, the messages from our challenges and using them as the sacred invitations and initiations into our kind of next steps the next chapter of our lives because that's what they are. So we are shifting our relationship to the challenges. We are transmuting how they look. We are stepping the fuck out of victim role and we are really embracing the flow of life and living in a state of just fascination and and transmutation and beauty. And so that's that's kind of my my gift for you today and and what I really would love for you to walk away with. If I can just throw in one last point, you mentioned uh, emotional displays and creating a culture where this kind of thing is acceptable. I will leave gun control debates to others, but I feel very confident in saying that if we lived in a culture that didn't try to stifle these kinds of things so much and rather embraced and transmuted their traumas, there would be a lot less public shootings. Like, there would be a lot less violent outbursts. There would be a lot less deaths on the road due to drunk drivers. Like, why was that person, what what were they running from, you know, when they were out all night drinking and didn't care about their own safety or the safety of others? What is happening in our society that we're killing ourselves and each other? I mean, talk about the collective health of our, uh, of our race as human beings. You know, it, it's just incredible to me. So I think that a lot of public health and safety from an extremely literal and straightforward point of view comes down to exactly what you're talking about. Totally. I could not agree more with you. It's not just because you're sexy. Well, I mean, it helps. Because I told, no, I, I completely, completely agree with that wholeheartedly. So let's have it start with us, within each and every one of us being the lighthouse for everybody else and dropping this whole notion of, you know, we, we don't, we don't display that. We don't talk about that. We don't do this. No, 
fuck that, we do, we do now. And we start with inside of ourselves, looking at those things that are too painful or have felt too painful, stepping out of victim mode and into the inner alchemy transmutation journey where we don't let go, but we embrace all parts of us and that will radiate out to everybody else. It's just like yesterday when we were talking about the quantum entanglement theory as it relates to trauma. I am on one, y'all, all right? Felt like Sheldon with my whiteboard. Anyway, we are out of time. All right, okay. yeah, <laughs> probably for the best to go on all right. day. Right, okay. So if you loved the show and want to learn more, please subscribe to it. Please kindly leave us a review on iTunes, share us with a friend, and visit www.innerspark.life to learn more. We'd love to hear your thoughts or questions about today's show, so deepen the conversation with us on social media at InnerSparkLife on Instagram and Facebook. Check us next time when we'll discuss what a lightworker actually is and why we all need to step up. So much love to you until then.